Hi there, and welcome back to the Web Data Grid series. I'd like to show you how to create an editable grid using some of the CRUD behaviors of the new Web Data Grid. So what we're going to build is this basically this grid here. We've got it bound up to Northwind. And if I come in here and just do something like this, just make it fast here, and hit Enter, you can see that uh, it's submitted the information to the database. And if I refresh, all of my changes have been persisted. The thing that I think you're going to find about this is that how easy it is in order to make this grid editable. So the next thing I can do is I can come in and double click on an, on an item and make that field editable. So if I make a change here, what's going to happen next is there is a button that's going to appear on the screen that will allow me to submit my updates. Now, when we did the add, all I had to do was press enter and it added the information to the database. However, with updates, what you can do is do updates to multiple fields before you send anything. So that's why we have the button appear on the screen. So if we just change this to something else, now if I hit save updates, that's persisted the changes server. And if I refresh the page, you can see we've got what we want there. Finally, if I come over to my row selection, select the row and hit the delete key, I can delete that record from the database. So I have full CRUD capabilities from this grid. And as we get into the code, the thing is you're going to find is that it's really easy to add. Now, there's also another form that you can do. And I've switched to a, a separate page, which implements the row edit template. So if I come into one of these items and double click on the values, you'll see that it doesn't switch over to an edit view. So instead of having to edit each one of the items in the grid individually, if I come over to the row selector and double click, now I get a row edit template. It's not styled all that nice, <laughs> but um, I can come in and make changes as I want. And once I'm done making all the changes I want for that row, when I hit OK, um, we get the same button here so that we could go through and update information on, on many rows. But if we save the updates, now when we refresh the page, we've got our changes. All right, well, let's drop down to code and I'll show you how it's all done. All right, to get us started here, I've got a page prepared here. And uh, it's just a regular ASP.NET website running in Visual Studio 2008 against NetAdvantage 2008 Volume 3. So the grid is going to require script managers. So I have a script manager on the page. We've got the grid, which we're going to customize here in just a moment, and a SQL data source. So let's go ahead and start off by customizing the data source. I have an existing connection to Northwind set up with this application. So we'll go ahead and use that. And let's take a look at the products table. And to make things easy, I'll just do product ID, product name, and unit price. So I'm going to come into advanced because I want to generate the insert, update, and delete statements. And uh, we'll hit next and finish. So the next thing we need to do is go up to the data grid itself and associate it with the uh, data source ID. And so now it generated up the columns for us, which we can go in and customize. Before we get too far ahead, let's update some properties of the grid. Um, the data key fields is a field that it will need in order to know which one is the primary key value. So we will say, uh, let's go ahead and assign this to the product ID. Now we'll come in and edit some of the behaviors. And what we want to do is, is make this grid editable. So we'll go ahead and do cell editing, row adding, row deleting. Now, the, when you do row deleting, if you don't have row selectors and selection, uh, clicked already, it will come up with this little window asking you if you want to do it. Obviously, yes, we want to add in the selection because that's what makes it uh, makes it easy to do the row deleting. So you know you're selecting an entire row. So from there, let's go ahead and hit apply and OK. And we need to do one other thing to the object data source or the SQL data source here. The select statement, what I want to do is just take a look at the top 10. And then I'll order by product name. And this will just constrain the amount of records that we have in the grid to make it easy to work with. And then when I add records, I'll do it in such a way that it'll show up at the top of the list. So it just makes life easier for us at this point. So really, what have we done? We've turned on some of the behaviors that allow us to do editing. We updated the SQL data source. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we've got just with what I've done so far. So here we have the grid that's populated with the, the value from our query. So I can come in here and um, I can add a new item. So let's just say product name AAA. 
unit price is 23. When I hit enter, that value has been added to the database. I can refresh this page. It's all been persisted. So it uses the, the data source object to do all of the interaction with the database. Now, everything that I'm showing you right now, you could do with an object data source and certainly implement your own um, custom data layer. It absolutely works. So, so keep that in mind as you're watching all this. So I can also come up here to uh, the row and click on the row selector over here on the left and hit the delete key. And now if I refresh too, you can see that that item has been removed from the database. So if I come in and I wanted to make an update, however, I can do this, hit enter. And then if I hit refresh, you'll notice that the changes were not persisted. And the reason for that is because the updates are deferred updates so that you could make changes to a number of the items in the grid. And then you have to explicitly send a command telling the grid to update. And that's actually quite easy to do. So what we'll do is come in here and add a, uh, a button. Okay, so we just have a button that's basically going to cause a post back to the server. So if I go ahead and run this again and change something here to Alice Mutton and then hit save updates. Uh, now, if I, uh, I don't wanna refresh because that'll do the post back again, you can see that those changes are persisted. Now that's fine, but it would be nice if we had something like we had in the initial demo where it was more Ajaxy, so that uh, we don't have to do this full post back. So what we'll do is, is close this up and then we'll come in here and the button, and only the button, what we'll do is wrap in an update panel. And the reason for that is is because the grid is doing its updates using Ajax as well. So we're not gonna wrap the grid in the update panel because then we, we're just sending too much information uh, forward and back from the server. So all we need to do is wrap the button within an update panel and then we'll have exactly what we're looking for. And I just wanna add a little bit more here in order to, to give the UI some responsiveness so people know what's going on. So let's add a style here and what we'll do is we'll initially make that button invisible. So we'll call this hide and we'll do visibility hidden. And if you remember correctly from your CSS, when you say visibility hidden, what happens is it takes up the same amount of space on the page as it would if it were being shown to the user, but it's hidden. So it's different than display none where it just completely removes it from the page. The reason we're using this is because that way things won't seem to move around on the page. And so we're simply just hiding it from the user at this point. So we'll come over to the button and we'll assign the CSS class as hide. So then what needs to happen is when some a change is made to the grid, it needs to show up. So let's come over here and go into the behaviors and in the cell editing, let's go to one of these client events here. And when the edit mode is exited, we're going to say that the cell is dirty. Okay. So that makes a pointer to a JavaScript function for cell dirty. And then all we need to do is create a script block. And then the cell dirty function will simply remove that CSS class from our button. And we'll go ahead and get the client ID of our button here. And then from there, we'll just say class name equals nothing. So it basically removes the class um, from our, our button there. Let's go ahead and run it and see how it works. So when I come in and make a change to this item. Now the button shows up on the page. I can submit my changes. It's all done with an asynchronous request. If I go ahead and refresh the page, 
I now have the changes persisted to the database. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.